the boat was longer, so you could just walk into the boat. Did it disappear? That was three hours of hell. It was awful. We're the cooks, and this is our boat, Hang Time. We've spent the last two years getting to know how to sail and having some great adventures along the way. The best is yet to come. Join us as we continue to explore the world on our floating home. Great yesterday, super calm. Yes, I want to play with you. It was great, it was super calm, it was really pretty. It was Saturday, lots of people on the beaches and on boats, and it was just a really relaxing day cruise. Uh, really starting to feel like summer around here. The first 24 hours of the passage were very smooth and relatively relaxing. We enjoyed the most beautiful sunset to end the day, but the old adage, red sky at night, sailors delight, didn't hold true for us as we woke to a heavy fog with almost no visibility. Well, it's now 7.20 and the fog is worse. It's probably less than a boat length away. Lame. Yeah, we're, uh, we've dropped our winds. We have 1.7 knots apparent. So, all sails are down, two motors are on, around six and a half knots. And Tuck is looking further away than closer. 
But we're slogging away getting there. The waves aren't. There's a swell that's picking up a bit, but yeah. But putting, it, putting in miles. The wind is almost directly behind us. We've got 12, 14 knots of wind. And even with two engines on, we're only going six and a half knots with the main and jib up. We took down the code zero last night before we went to bed. So that's not fast enough to get us to Nantucket before dark. We're going to pull that setup in and we're going to try flying the code zero on its own and see if we can get a little more juice out of this thing. Of course, the one and a half knot current against us isn't helping us either, but maybe we'll get a little more. We'll see if it's worth our while. This setup with the code only, not really going to work. It's just not enough wind to fill it and the wind's right behind us. The wind died, so it's only about 10 knots. So we we'll probably just have to furl it in for a couple of hours and wait for the wind to pick up a bit. I can even barely see you up there. Yeah? Yeah, you just kind of disappeared. <gasps> With the camera, you should see the film. I wish the boat was longer so you could just walk into the mist. It just disappeared? Like if like you were recording me and I just walk all the way to the front and you see me slowly disappearing. That would be pretty awesome. Okay, it's, it seriously feels like a ghost ship is going to emerge from the fog. It's pretty... It's pretty eerie. I'll be happy when it's gone. Oh my gosh, look at them all! Look at them here. As we approached Nantucket, the fog finally lifted and we had a greeting by a large pot of dolphins, but we were not out of the woods yet. As we turned into the Nantucket Sound, we faced some strong headwinds and ripping currents. I know I'll never make it big on YouTube because in these times of high stress, I just can't find it in myself to pull out the camera. You'll just have to trust me, it was bad. That was three hours of hell. It was awful. Don't you be smiling after what we just went through? The only thing that's bad for me is I have a headache. Oh, oh my God. We came around the corner. Oh, Ruby, you tripped me. We came around the corner into Nantucket Sound and the wind was howling and the tide was ripping and we had to beat into it for like more than 15 miles. It was over 30 knots of wind. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> it was terrible. 30 knots of wind is that much. 30 knots of wind is a lot. Anyway, Brad was at the helm. He's frozen. I look frozen, but I was only outside for like half an hour of the whole thing. My feet are freezing. We are anchored in Nantucket, thankfully. Oh my God, I'm so happy to be here. It's still howling. It's still a miserable night outside. But I feel like we have a pretty good hold on our anchor. We just need to keep the boat warm because it's cold here. Oh, I know. We're all going to sleep well tonight. I hope as long as the anchor doesn't give us any trouble. Coming into Nantucket uh, yesterday was pretty harsh. I mean, the waves were, there was like 30 knots of wind there. The waves were medium sized. Um, the, it, there was just different currents. It was not really fun for about three hours. And you couldn't, like, uh, for me, if I ever get seasick, I go up to the top of the boat or uh, to the helm but station. But it was so cold that you just couldn't well, go up there. And then also the waves were splashing on you. And so like, if you brought up a blanket or anything, you'd get soaked. And then, like, down there, the cushions were soaked. I tried, well, I stayed down back there in the cockpit. And, I mean, it was okay, but I wasn't that comfortable. I got splashed on a couple of times. Um, I would not want to do it again. But also, I mean, the five-day passage we did for, like, four days, it was, that was pretty much it. Well, not four days, maybe like three days. 
in the middle of it, that was how it was, the passage. So are you happy to be in Nantucket? Yep. Yeah. My favorite part of Nantucket is how all of the roads are brick. Oh yeah, the museum. There's a museum? Yeah, you went to it. Are we going they to have it a again? They huge um, whale like hanging at the top, like fake, but mm. still looks exactly like a normal whale. So we can probably pop in there today, Benny? No. Mm -hmm. no and it talked about and it talked about how um, Nantucket had a huge whaling history. It sure did. <laughs> this is more crowded than St. John. We find a spot. There wouldn't be uh, two back here, guys. It's quite the dinghy dock. Nice job, Charlie. Parting the seas at the oh, dinghy dock. So, uh, where are you at? <laughs> I'm in Nantucket and Ruby is really happy to be on the shore. Oh, she's going crazy over there. And I'm really happy to be here. I love this place. I loved it ever since I read Ahab's Wife after your Aunt Carolyn gave it to me. And it's just like stepping back in time. It's so beautiful. Watch next time as we make the final push to Canada and reconnect with family and friends for the first time since the pandemic started.